So for starters, let's talk about the purpose of high availability. High availability goes beyond uptime of a server. It's about being accessible to users, ready to work. For example, in the case of Exchange, being able to send and receive mail. So just because a server is up, if there's something that's affecting the way that server works, especially if the main focus for that server is to perform specific tasks or to have specific services or server applications running, if those applications are not functioning properly, then it really doesn't matter if the server is up. No, it involves not only being up, but having those specific services up and having network connectivity up. All of those things come into play when you start looking at high availability. And so when we say look at high availability, well, we can look at it from a real 100,000 foot perspective as far as what are we looking for in terms of our systems or services or server applications being highly available. But typically we're talking about it from a service level agreement, an SLA. In other words, someone is promising you that they're going to ensure a level of availability. Now, typically, the levels are expressed in percentages of uptime. So you might have 99.9%, .9%, which equals 43.8 minutes of downtime per month for 8.76 hours per year. Now, if you're dealing with either an individual or an organization or perhaps a service, perhaps a hosted service, and they're offering that level of high availability, you might look at that and say, that's acceptable. In my organization, 43.8 minutes per month, I can deal with that. But for others, they say, no, I can't lack availability for that amount of time, especially for something as important as exchange. So you might look at something that provides 99.99% or 99.999%. Really, there is no solution that guarantees 100% even though there may be service level agreements that promise 100 percent in truth the promise is there but anything can happen that could bring that hundred percent down so you look for the best and typically as these percentages go up as we look at getting less and less time that's downtime per month or per year typically the price tag rises so you also have to look at that how much money am i willing to spend to get these incredible percentage amounts of high availability and lower the minutes of downtime per month or per year. Some other things to consider include your RTO and RPO. Let's talk about this. So for starters you have your recovery time objective or RTO. The fancy definition from Wikipedia is the duration of time and a service level within which a business process must be restored after a disaster or disruption in order to avoid unacceptable consequences associated with a break in business continuity okay that's the fancy side to this the simple definition is acceptable time without service being available so your recovery time objective is basically the amount of time you can deal with the service being down how much time is it going to take to recover from whatever failure may come your way so many companies would say, well, there is no acceptable time where I can be without the service. No, I must have that service 24-7-365. Okay, well, again, that comes at a price. But you have to be realistic in looking at a recovery time objective. If you need it to be immediate, the restoration of service, well, then you need to put great effort into ensuring all of your services and servers are highly available. That involves three things, redundancy, resiliency, and recovery. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Before we get to that, the next key word for high availability is the recovery point objective. Now again, the fancy definition from Wikipedia is the maximum tolerable period in which data might be lost from an IT service due to a major incident. The simple definition is how much data, past and present, must be restorable in the RTO. So when you look at recovering data and you need to get back to a recovery point, you're certainly thinking about all of the data from the past. You need to make sure that you have a reasonable backup and you can recover data if it's lost from some type of disaster. But in terms of the present, 
do you need up to the second, up to the nanosecond? Really, how much data in the present sense do you want to be responsible for when it comes to availability? There are certain things that you can't control. Obviously, if an email never made it into your organization, when that organization perhaps goes down, or the WAN connection goes down, or the Exchange server goes down, whatever the case, when it goes down, if that email never made it there, well, that's not something that you can control. You can't reach out to the internet, find the bits, put it back together, and make sure that email comes in. No. But if that email did make it into your organization, depending on how far it got, whether it got to a hub transport server, or maybe even made it to the mailbox server, you want to make sure you can recover that email. That email might be incredibly important. Do the tools Microsoft provides us in the box allow us the ability to recover that email? Even if perhaps it didn't get copied over to a replica of the data, can you recover it? Well, those are some of the things that you have to think about and consider when you're thinking about recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives. And so we're going to discuss this from the exchange perspective. But just to satisfy your curiosity, yes, if the email made it as far as a hub transport server, not to worry, it can be recovered. And not to worry, soon enough we'll explain how. Now I mentioned a moment ago, redundancy, resiliency, and recovery. These are the keys for making a solution like Exchange more highly available. Redundancy involves having more than one server, power supply, site copy, really having multiple copies of the data and having multiple ways for those servers to continue to be up and running in the event one part of hardware or software fails. So that's redundancy. Resiliency is the ability to keep working despite a single or even multiple software or hardware failures. Now that might sound a lot like redundancy and the two do work hand in hand but they have different concepts and I think we'll use an illustration in a moment that will help to clarify the difference between redundancy and resiliency. Then there's recovery. When all else fails, the ability to restore data from a backup is essential. That's not what you want. You don't ever want to restore data from a backup. You really don't. But when all else fails, that may be the only thing you can do. And so you need to make sure that you're prepared to take your high availability all the way to the nth degree that in the event you really have no other choice, you've got that backup. Obviously your percentage numbers are going to be hit because the time that you have to spend recovering using a backup will really skew the numbers a bit out of shape. You certainly won't be in the 99.999% when it comes to availability. But the important thing in that case is that you have the ability in some way to get the data back. So there are times when high availability is not the most important thing when simply getting that data back becomes more important. Now the three R's of high availability do not necessarily come out of the box with Exchange depending on our needs. And what I mean by that is yes, with Exchange you can have redundancy, you can have resiliency, and you can have recovery. All of those things are there. Exchange provides solutions for high availability, but our needs and or expectations may exceed what is provided natively. So we might be thinking, you know, I really want to make sure that I have a really great recovery solution perhaps. And we look at what is provided out of the box with server 2008 R2 and we say, hmm, this just doesn't cut it. It's not really what I want. Well, in that case, you need to look at third party solutions. So we're not saying here in this course that Exchange provides every last little bit that you need when it comes to the three R's. I will go on record as saying that the solutions that are provided by Exchange for high availability are excellent. And for most organizations, small and medium sized businesses especially, the tools that are included right out of the box will give you more than what you're probably used to in times past and perhaps even more than what you need for your organization. But from the perspective of certainly covering myself in the sense that I realize and you need to realize that Exchange doesn't provide every last little bit that you can get out of availability when it comes to third party solutions. Third party solutions are able to make money for good reason. They provide something that isn't there in Exchange. If they didn't do that, if they just provided you the same thing that Exchange provides, they'd all go broke. 
So in the case of availability, there's certainly additional value to looking at third-party solutions if what Exchange provides out of the box doesn't cut it for you.